Okay, the live feed has started. Now I'm gonna start your recording. Okay. Hare Krishna, I welcome everyone to Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. I thank you all so much for joining us today. Can we have everyone on mute, please? Thank you. Mataji, we cannot hear you. Can I start, Mataji? Uh, why? Uh, no one can hear me? Now we can hear, hear you. you. Now we can. Okay. Hare Krishna, I welcome everyone to Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. So today we have a very special speaker and her name is Rasika. Rasika is 10 and a half years old. She was born on November 8th. She likes playing harmonium, singing, uh, organizing her things, making crafts, cooking, reading, riding on her bike. Uh, she likes making homemade beauty products and she loves playing with her brother. So we are very fortunate to have Rasika on the call with us today and she's a very active student of the Govinda group. And Rasika is gonna speak on the stories from Mahabharata. So thank you so much, Rasika, for coming on the call. You can now take over and start your presentation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh my Gyanam Tivaram. Hare Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So before I begin I would like to before I begin I would like to humbly seek your blessings um, so I can speak nicely on this topic so I'm going to be speaking about stories from Mahabharat. So there's a quick story I want to say which you can apply in your life and it really helps. So one time a man and a girl were walking and it suddenly started raining really heavily. So many people reacted to this differently. Like some people were protecting their money and belongings. Some people are trying to shelter themselves. Okay. But this one girl holds out her hand and welcomes the pouring rain. So what can we learn from this story? What we can learn from the story is that many problems will come across in our life. And we should, instead of running away from them, we should try to solve them. Like maybe you and your brother have a fight or maybe you and your siblings have a fight. So instead of running away from the problem, we should try to solve it, try to reason with them. So I'm going to be talking about the six seeds of Mahabharat and how um, if you apply this to your life, then you can see the presence of God. So the first C is choices. The second C is challenges. The third C is commitment. The fourth C is connection. The fifth C is certainty and the six is composure. So on choices is a short story. One time a man was going to a village and he said to the child, in your town, have any great leaders been born? And the child said, no, sir, in my town, no great people have been born, only children. So how this connects to choices is that in choices, how individual people make different choices leads to what they become in the future like Albert Einstein. If he didn't study, if he didn't study for science, he wouldn't have become Albert Einstein. He would just become a normal person. But since he put his talent and he put like choices that he wants to study, he was determined to study. That's why he became Albert Einstein. So the first C is from 
the first C is choices. And there's a story from Mahabharat which connects to this. So one time Krishna was sleeping on his bed in his palace. And, and Durga comes to Krishna to ask for help in the war. And he sits near the head of Krishna. Then Arjuna comes a little while later and Arjuna sits near the feet of Krishna. So when Krishna wakes up, he sees Arjuna first. So he tells to Arjuna that I will give you two choices. Just when he's saying that, Duryodhan says, no way, I came first, I get to choose first. But Krishna said, no, I saw Arjuna first, so I will give him the two choices. So what choices he said were, either me, I will drive your chariot unarmed, I will not have any weapons or help you, or my powerful Narayani Sena. So Arjuna chose Krishna driving his chariot. And Duryodhan actually looks sad on his face because he's like, oh, okay, I'll just choose Narayana Sena. But he's actually, he's so happy in his mind because he's like, how could Arjuna have been so careless? I mean, isn't Krishna's Narayana Sena more powerful than him if he's not gonna help? So similarly, we should also choose Krishna instead of his belongings. Each prize possession you have is zero. But when you add Krishna who is like one, it puts a value in the zeros. So if there's two zeros here, then you add a one, then it becomes 100. Otherwise, it's just two zeros and it has no value. Arjuna chose God over God's possessions. Therefore, he got both in the end when he went to spiritual world. So there's a short story about the four mentalities of people, the four common mentalities of people. One time when um, Yudhishthir won the, won the war in Kurukshetra, he had like a ceremony and each of the five Pandavas had a role to play in the ceremony. So um, one of Bhima's roles was problem solver. So um, people came and they told Bhima his problems and Bhima would tell them the answers, like how you can solve the problem. So four different people came to him and he couldn't answer, answer the questions. So he told um, all the four people to go to Yudhishthir and ask Yudhishthir questions. Since Yudhishthir is known to be Dharmaraj, he knows all the answers to questions. So Yudhishthir tells what these questions mean. So four different people came and they asked different questions. The first person came and he said this. In my garden, I had a fence and the fence was going to the other person's garden. Now, this is like, um, Yudhishthir says like a very interesting answer for this. In this age, people are not satisfied with what they have, but they want what others have. Some people think that, oh, that person has this, I don't have that. But instead we should think, oh, I have this, that's good. We should think of what we have rather than what we don't have. Then we'll have a happy, successful life. The second person came and he said this problem. There was a big pot filled to top and I transferred it into five small pots. And then I again transferred it into the big pot, but it was only half full. What this represents is that relationships today are like that. No matter how much love you give, only 50% comes back. Like maybe you're like really kind to your brother or sister and maybe it seems like they only give 50% back, but actually they're already giving 100% back. It just everybody has their own way, way of giving love. So um, that's what that means. And then the third person came and he said, I was passing an elephant through the eye of a needle and the tail got stuck. Imagine a whole elephant through the eye of a needle and just the tail got stuck. This represents is that in this age, people will spend so much money on themselves. But when it comes to giving some money to someone else, they will not give. Like, um, I've seen something like this. Uh, I've seen when I go to Farmington Hills Temple in Michigan here, um, we have Sunday feasts. Um, so we get like free um, lunch for Shadam every Sunday. And so um, some people just come to the temple and they eat the Sunday feast for free. But when the announcements come in, um, this Prabhuji announces, can you donate some or give a sponsorship for next Sunday's feast? Then they don't give. They don't donate any money. So um, that's what... That's what happens this age. People will spend so much money on themselves. But when somebody just asks, can you give me this? Because I'm poor, they won't give it to someone else. And finally, the fourth person came and he said, 
that there was a boulder on top of a hill and big, big, powerful wrestlers came to push it down, but it didn't budge. Then a thin sannyasi comes, he waves a stick and, and the boulder rolls down the hill. What this represents is that great scholars perform sophisticated rituals and they don't work. But by chanting the holy name, you can attain even more than that. Some people um, perform so many sophisticated yagnas and thinking that they can go to back to Godhead, back to the spiritual world. But by chanting the holy name, if you just sing Hare Krishna, if you just chant Hare Krishna at least one round every day for your age, then you can go to spiritual world. Krishna says that. So, this from Ramayan, there's three different places in Ramayan which we can connect to in our own lives. So, the first place is Ayodhya. Ayodhya means Sanskriti. Sanskriti means culture. Lanka means Vikriti. Vikriti means vulture mentality. In Lanka, mostly people um, look for value in things. They don't look for value in relationships. And in Kishkinda, it's Prakriti. Prakriti means Vanara. Vanara means, am I human? So sometimes we choose Sanskriti and sometimes we choose Vikriti. When we're in Kishkinda, we sometimes choose Sanskriti and sometimes Vikriti. People in Kali Yoga this age are Kishkinda, are in Kishkinda Vasis. Because sometimes they go to Ayodhya, they go to culture, and sometimes they go to vulture mentality. So we are in Kishkinda and we have the dual choice whether we go to Ayodhya or Lanka. That is completely up to us. One minute. Okay, so, sorry Mataji, something happened to my screen. Rashi, can you see my screen? Yes, Rasika, we can see. So we have the Juala choice. So there's six C's, which I'm gonna talk about. Yeah, but. So the, this second, the first C is challenges. Okay, so the second C is challenges. There's a short story to this. So in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, in the middle of the battle, Ashwatthama released the Naranastra. And Krishna told all the Pandavas to drop their weapons and bow down. So all the Pandavas dropped their weapons and bowed down, except for Bhima. Because Bhima had a little, he was a Kshatriya. So he was, he was a Kshatriya, so he was refusing to bow down in front of, like in the middle of the battlefield, he was refusing to bow down to the Nanarasra. And he decided to fight the drone. If all the Pandavas couldn't defeat the Nanarasra, then how could Bhima defeat the Nanarasra? So he tried himself, but obviously he couldn't succeed. And he was about to get Paris. And just in the nick of time, Krishna came and he wrestled Bhima to the ground. He threw his weapons and he wrestled Bhima to the ground. And eventually the Nanarastra went away because all the Pandavas surrendered into the Nanarastra. That was the challenge of the Pandavas. Each of us have a challenge and we have to overcome it. And to overcome it, we need to have humility. Humility is very, very important in life. If you don't have humility, you're gonna have a really bad life because sometimes when you uh, have a husband or a wife, then you will you might get a fight and you will need to have humility. You need to go up and say sorry to the person. Otherwise it could be a big fight. I can relate to this. So sometimes me and my brother have a fight. I have a brother named Mukunda and me and my brother have a fight. And usually I am not the one to say sorry and I have a little ego, like I say, why should I say sorry? But my brother is the first one to say sorry. After every fight we have, he's the first one to say sorry. 
So I admire him, hoping I can be inspired from him and have some humility in my life someday. So coming back to our point, humility is very, very important in life. The next C, okay, we're still on challenges. So there was a question, what is the daily job of God? So one time a king had a question and the king asked the priest to figure out the answer for what is the daily job of God? So the priest met a shepherd after being disappointed searching through all the scriptures there were. And the shepherd chose to answer this question directly to the king. What he said was that the daily job of God is to bring people who are proud and arrogant up, down, and make humble people go up. That's what Krishna does. He sits up there and people who are arrogant and proud, he just sends them down so they can learn how to be humble. And the people who are humble, he puts them up so that they have a higher platform and they can use their talent. So I'm gonna move to the third C, commitment. So there's a story to this. One time, Drona called you this year. And Dona said to Yudhishthira, I want you to go to the kingdom and find one person who is worse than you. So Yudhishthira came back from the whole kingdom and he said he couldn't even find a single person. And when Dona asked why, he said, because every person I saw had different qualities. One person was good at singing, which I wasn't good at. One person was good at this, which I wasn't good at. So Dona was very pleased with Yudhishthira. So he said, you can go away now. Now he did the same thing, but he did it to Duryodhana. He said, Dona called you Duryodhana. And he said, I want you to go to the kingdom and find one person who is better than you. So Duryodhana finds, goes to the whole kingdom and he finds no one who is better than him because he thinks that I am the best. Nobody will be better than me. So similarly, Prabhupada, he was like Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira was like Prabhupada. He saw positivity in every person, whether it was a hippie or non-devotee, he saw positivity in every person. That was such a good quality of Prabhupada. So it's very important to deal with challenges with commitment. There's another story for this, how people's mindsets are. So one time in the battle of Kurukshetra, Karna was made commander in chief when Bhishma died. So Karna told Duryodhan that I can kill Arjuna today if I have a good chariot driver of Krishna. And Duryodhan said, there's no other chariot driver as good as Krishna. And he starts to think and he says, oh, Shalya, yes, Shalya. So Karna says, can you tell Shalya to be my chariot driver? And Duryodhan says, never, he's not gonna listen because Shalya had a very big ego. Like he wouldn't become a chariot driver of Karna. So, Kar so Duryodhan said, I can't um, become the chariot driver. I can't, Duryodhan said that I can't convince Shalya. So the Karna said, okay, then I won't be able to kill Arjuna. Now Arjuna, the five panda was like, were like really strong, they were like they were stronger than Duryodhan and his 100, um, 100 brothers. So Duryodhan really wanted Arjuna to be killed. So he said, no, please, I will persuade, um, I'll persuade Shalya, you please kill uh, Arjuna. So Karna said, okay. So Duryodhan goes to Shalya and he says, Shalya, will you become Karna's chariot driver? And actually everyone in Duryodhan's team had one condition. If you don't do this, I will only do this on one condition. Everybody on Duryodhan's team had one condition. So similarly, Shali had a condition and he said, I will only be Karna's chariot driver if and only if I get to talk whatever I want. So Duryodhan thought it wasn't a big deal. So he said, okay, no problem. So, all during the um, drive where they were going to Arjuna, Karna was driving and Shalya, I mean, Shalya was chair driver and Karna was sitting in the back. And all the time Shalya was being so sarcastic, like you can't do this, you can't do that. Like basically he was trying to distract Karna. And so Karna got like really mad and they started fighting with each other while driving. Finally, they reached where Arjuna was. And like when 
they reached there, Shalya told Karna, you only talk big things. So Shalya told Karna, I will tell you a story. Once there was a crow who was just like you. He was showing off all the time. He was like, I can do this, I can do that, but he never really did it. And all the birds in the forest wanted to teach him a lesson. So the swam said a competition should be held. And the crow said, like, I'm good at everything. You choose the competition topic. So the swan said, we will glide across the ocean. So the crow, while he was going on the ocean, he was doing all sorts of fancy moves, like a back flip and a front flip, like all kind of fancy moves. While the swan was just plain gliding across the ocean. Pretty soon, the crow got tired and he fell into the water. Now, he was like, he shouted and he said, Swan, please help me, please help me. And Swan said, no problem, this year 109 trick. You've already done 108, this year 109 trick. So no problem. And the crow said that, please, please help me, I'm dying, please help me. So Swan finally saved him. And the crow went back. Of course, he learned his lesson and he didn't brag that much. But Shali said to Karna, you are like crow and Arjuna is like the swan. Each of the five Pandavas had different qualities. Bhima was good at his gada and Arjuna was good at his um, bow. So Arjuna couldn't tell Yudhishthir, oh look, I'm better at you at bow because Yudhishthir didn't know how to do bow. So each of them had different qualities so they couldn't compare themselves. Any questions so far? Okay, so the next scene is connection. So this is, um, one time there's a short story for this. Yudhishthir, one time he was fighting with Karna and he was just about to die when his chariot driver helped him. Now he's lying in the medical tent and he's, um, he's thinking, will Arjuna come? Will he, say, will he see me? Will he come to see if he's okay? So Arjuna went, just when he was thinking that, Arjuna came to Yudhishthira to ask if he's, he was okay. And Yudhishthira asked, Yudhishthira was like burning with anger. And he asked Arjuna, Arjuna, have you killed Karna yet? And he was really anxious to kill Karna because not only had Karna defeated him, Karna had also insulted Yudhishthira very, very badly. So when Yudhishthira asked Arjuna if Arjuna had killed Karna, you, Arjuna said, no, Arjuna hadn't even tried to kill Karna. So Yudhishthira got upset, like, how could you? And started insulting Arjuna, like, you shouldn't have been born in our family. I don't, you're not fit to be in our family. And he started insulting him very bad. And so Arjuna got angry. And Yudhishthira also said many insults. Like he said, you should throw your Gandiva bow away. You were not born in our family. And Arjuna got angry and he went to kill Yudhishthira. Now Krishna is watching these two brothers fight and he's like, Arjuna, what happened? You came in to ask Yudhishthira if he was all right and you're fighting now? So Arjuna said that I took a vow. Anyone who insults my Gandiva, I will kill him. Now Krishna is like, why do you take such vows? Like Arjuna takes so many severe vows, right? As if, uh, if you have watched Mahabharat, uh, you will know. He's taken a lot of vows and he's had to break them. And every time Krishna is there for him. So anyways, Krishna said, don't worry, I have a solution to that. According to the scriptures, when a younger person insults the older person, it is as good as killing him. So Arjuna abuses Yudhishthira like very badly, like you're not good at this, you're not good at that. And then after he sufficiently does that, he takes out a sword to kill himself. Now Krishna asks, why are you killing yourself now? So Arjuna says, how can I live if I insult my older brother? So Krishna said, don't worry, I have a solution to that too. So Krishna says, according to the scriptures, if you praise yourself, it is as good as killing yourself. So Arjuna praises, praises himself like anything. Like I have defeated Indra, I have defeated Shiva, I have defeated all the demigods, I have done this, I have done that. And then now Arjuna is peaceful. So what Arjuna, Arjuna actually bows down to Krishna and he says, Krishna, if you weren't there, what would I have done without you? Every time I have a problem, you're always there to solve it. If Krishna didn't, wasn't here to tell Arjuna about the scriptures, then Arjuna would have had to kill himself. So each person 
each person in this world has a fallback option. The Yodan, the Yodan's fallback option was Shakuni. Whenever he was in doubt, whenever he's like, oh, let's fight Pandavas, he always asked Shakuni, Shakuni, can you help me? And Shakuni was always there to help him. And Arjuna's fallback option was Krishna. So similarly, when we go to difficult times, what is our fallback option? Do we go to our parents? Do we go to our children? Do we go to our siblings? Do we go to our friends? Who do we go to? When we have challenging times, who do we go to? That's connection. And the fifth C is composure. So one time a lady was reading across the scriptures and she came across this particular verse. It said, he the silversmith threw the metal into the furnace and sat watching it. So the lady saw this and she went to the, she went to a silversmith and she decided to see herself. She went to the silversmith and um, she saw that he threw the metal into the furnace and sat watching it. Now, when the lady asked the silversmith, how do you know when to take it out? How do you know when to take the metal out? So the silversmith said that when I can see my mirror effect in it, then I know that it has turned into silver. I'll repeat the verse again. He, the silversmith, threw the metal into the furnace and sat watching it until he could see himself in the metal now turned into silver. What this means is that God threw us into the material world and sat watching us until he could see himself in us. And when it was a perfect time, he took us back to the spiritual world. I'll say it once again. God threw us into the material world, in the, into the furnace so that we could burn and sat watching us until he could see himself in us, until he could see the same qualities in us, until he could see us chanting his holy name. And when it was a perfect time, he took us back to the spiritual world. So the sixth C is the chain team. There's a story for this. Um, so one time Krishna and Arjuna were walking and they met an old Brahman. So when the Brahman met Arjuna and Krishna, the Brahman told Arjuna that, oh, I'm so poor, I don't have money to feed my family, I don't even have money to buy clothes. And Arjuna feels pity for him. And he says that, he says that, okay, fine, I'll give you a bag of gold coins. So then the Brahman is so happy, he makes his way home. And while he's on the forest, a robber comes, a masked robber, and he steals the money. Now the Brahman is so sad again because he can't catch the robber and the robber is already gone. And so he steals the money. And the Brahman sad again. So then the Brahman tells Arjuna. And Arjuna feels pity for him. So he gives him his diamond ring. And the Brahman is really happy and keeps the diamond ring in an old pot in a house. Next morning, his wife goes to get water from the river. And she doesn't know that the diamond ring is in the pot. So the diamond falls into the water. And so she tells um, the Brahman and the Brahman's so sad again. So he finds Krishna and Arjuna and tells him. Now this time Krishna removes two pennies and gives the Brahman. So the Brahman sees a fisherman pulling a big fish. And so he sees, oh, what am I supposed to do? I'll just use this money. And he sees the fish is struggling. So he helps the fish, he pays, he pays the fish, he pays he pays a fisherman and buys the fish. Now just, he's thinking that I'll throw it back into the water when he sees that the fish is not struggling because it's out of the water. It's struggling because something is stuck in the fish's mouth. So he puts his hand on a very big fish and he takes out and he finds out it's his diamond. So he's so happy, he says, I found, I found, I found. And the robber is just passing that way. And he sees, and he thinks the Brahman is saying to him, and he's like, no, 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 please, for me, you don't tell the king. Please, 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 please don't. I'll return your gold queens. So the, so the robber returns the gold queens. Now, Arjuna is amazed. And Arjuna says that, how come this happened? I thought there was no destiny for the Brahman to get any money. And so the Krishna said a very important explanation. When you gave the precious items, like the diamond ring and the gold, gold coins, he was happy. He was thinking about himself. 
But when he got the two pennies, he was thinking, what am I supposed to do with this? So he started thinking how I can help others. So those are all the six C's. And um, basically how we can connect to certainty is that it wasn't in the destiny of the Brahman. And when he started thinking about others, not only himself, then destiny gave good luck to him. So I finished with all the C's. What we can apply with this is that when you follow all six C's, you can certainly see the presence of God in life. Does anybody have any questions or comments? I have a question. I have a question. Yeah, one minute. Okay, who has a question? Vasu. Okay, Vasu, what's your question? My question is, like, how did the diamond ring get into the fish? So, um, when Brahman came back, he put the diamond ring in a pot because he didn't want it to get stolen again. And so he uh, put it in the pot and he forgot to tell his wife. And so then the wife, um, she took the pot and she had two pots and one broke. And the other pot, just that she was feeling of water, because the diamond ring was really small, but it was precious. So the um, diamond ring fell in the well. Oh. Any other questions? Please raise your hand if you have any questions. Any more questions? Rasika Hare Krishna. It's an excellent presentation. Thank you, Master. So nice. That, uh, the, you, uh, the way you approached to me, uh, I was uh, totally surprised. Actually, I wanted to uh, put you in the line schedule, regular schedule. It's supposed to be in September, but you had so much of eager to share your knowledge. And then I gave this. Uh, this yeah, actually, actually, I just joined these classes and I saw that Prakshit last time he was giving um, the class about uh, stories from Padma Puranas. So I got inspired and I wanted to give a class on my own. Yes, Krishna Chaitanya was giving. Yes, after that, you asked me. Mm, so excellent. And then, can you share some of your experience, how you learn, how to get all the inspirations to learn all these things? So Mataji, actually, um, I heard, uh, I listened to all this information from a class, and um, Shubhalas Prabhu, he is very um, a good speaker, and uh, I got all this information from him, and I added some of my own life experiences and stories, and um, basically, I got inspired to do this because I thought most of these stories are stories which people don't know. And if I share them to all the kids, then they will tell their parents or they'll tell other kids and these stories will get around because I don't want to do some normal stories which everybody knows. So I thought of some, um, I got some new stories and I thought that this would be a great way to share them and connect um, to my heart. Thank you so much. Maybe other can go and... Hare Krishna, Rasika. Oh, okay, Mataji, go ahead. Please. Hare Krishna Rasika, thank you so much for such a beautiful presentation. You are a born preacher. <laughs> you can really see the, you know, the natural uh, flow as you're talking. It was very, very nice to see you speak so nicely. Exactly. Thank you so much for covering all the C's. <laughs> very interesting and very nicely detailed presentation. Thank you so much, Rasika. Hare Hi Krishna Rasika, this is Padmasaki Devi Dasi. Thank you so much. This is not just for the kids. You have taught so many life lessons, even for the elders. This doesn't look like your first time. I'm sure you would have presented many, no, many things. <laughs> yeah, I know you're very, very enthusiastic. Seriously, very inspiring to all the kids. Thank you. Nice to see you. Please bless me. Krishna Rasika, your class was really good. I liked it. Thank you.
you are present very well beta and 60 i love your class i learn and listen to and my both daughters i am really blessed ki you are in parliament temple you know devotee kids good job bachcha thank you mathi ji hare krishna rasika shila prabhu pasila gurudev blessing with you how nicely you narrating the leelas and especially my daughter is 28 years old but she is also hearing so sincerely my prabhu also 56 year old it is not for kids it is for us also and the ex how nicely very confidently like you are born devotee very confidently you explain the leelas like we feel that we enter in that leela like uh, 30 years or 25 years so prabhu ji or mata ji are explaining leela from sisi bhagavatam thank you god bless you radha shishi radha gopinath blessing with you thank hari you. hari gauranga yes the, does jagjit have a question hari bol rasika uh, i really like your presentation uh, i i would say c for composure with which you were c for communicating speaks a lot about c for your character and i see c for chaitanya's mercy in you through you and want to c for congratulate you very nice very well done very well done and how did you learn all these stories rasika Matthew, like I said, uh, I actually listened to a class two hours long, and I've been preparing since three weeks now. Oh, okay. Wow. Mm. So, uh, were you listening? Uh, were you listening? Like, uh, were you listening from your parents, or was it from a book? Um, the speaker should be last programmatory. Okay. Um, he has like very innovative classes. Like some speakers, like they don't give a lot of stories, so I'm not really interested to hear them. But Shivalas Prabhu, um, he's one of my favorite speakers. The other one is Gorgopal Prabhu. Okay. And so what I like is Shivalas Prabhu. He gives like a lot of stories. Okay. And I like stories and like lectures, like how yes. they connect to the real thing. Otherwise, it kind of sounds a little boring. Yeah, of I don't like. We, yeah, of course we all love stories. Just yes, make so much connection we can make, right? Thank <laughs> yeah. you very much. Thank you very much, Rasika. Thanks a lot. Hare Krishna, Rasika. I think you want to ask Jagdish first because he's raised his hand. Yeah, much. Yeah, please ask him first. I have a question. Yes, Jagdish. Why did the Brahmin keep the ring in a pot? Um, I think that was one of the only safe places in his house because, like I said, he was poor, and I think he wanted to save it to buy something, and maybe he wanted to surprise his wife and his children. So I think he wanted to hide it, but um, coincidentally, it was actually the one which his wife took, and so it dropped in the um, river, and it was really deep, so she couldn't take it out. Any more questions? Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. I like your presentation, Jessica. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Go ahead, kids. Go ahead. Hare Krishna. Rasa. Hare Krishna Rasika very nice class um I like how you were um talking about the seas and how you were um like relating those um um to your own personal life so I uh, that was kind of like interesting for me how you were like um you know like relating the incidents in the story that you were talking about to your personal life Thank you Thank you. Hare Krishna Rasika. Hare Krishna Rasika. Hare Krishna Rasika. Uh, I love your presentation but uh I know why did um why was the Brahmin so uh, poor and why didn't he have any money? Well, he was in India and many people in like India like Brahmin doesn't mean that you're like uh a brahmachari brahman means like you're married and um you're kind of like second initiated and so he was like poor probably cuz like maybe his parents were poor and he didn't have many money it just really depends how his family history is 
And many people in India are poor, so. Okay. Hi, Krishna Lashika. I really like your presentation. Thank you. Hi, Krishna Lashika. I love your presentation. Thank you. Hi, Krishna Lashika. That, that presentation was really good and it really helped me learn some uh, life lessons. Thank you. Hare Krishna Rashika Mataji, I liked your presentation. Thank you. Krishna, Are there any Rashika, I really like the presentation and, and the story. Thank you. Hare Krishna Rashika, I loved your presentation. Thank you. How old are you, Rashika? I'm actually, um, I'm 10 and a half. I'll be turning 11 in November. And uh, are you, you're connected to the Farmington Temple, is it, in Detroit? Yeah, Matsuri. Wonderful. I did not meet you. I'm so sorry. I should have met you someday. I'm Even also in turning in in November. <laughs> so, Rasika, like you said, that you have been uh, getting ready for this for three weeks, right? So oh, then... Uh, three weeks. Two weeks. So then when you heard for some classes, did you make the notes and did you try to apply it? Because even you, re as you said, right? And are you attending any of our classes for the Govinda or the Madhava? Uh, well, actually, actually, I just got to know of it. Um, uh -huh. So, like, um, Anushka, actually, uh, she's one of my friends. She told me of some of the classes, and I started joining the Govinda and um, the Madhava. But I, I don't really join Madhava yet because I'm not 11, but I'm in the group. Very good, very good. Thank you so much for joining. And I really love the thing which you, there were many points which I love, apart from the stories. And the way you connected the stories was really, really interesting because that is what we are trying to emphasize in our classes as well, that the stories are just not stories, but they are real life lessons. lessons. And the part which I loved over there was when you said that your brother, when, he, when you have a fight and then he's the one who says uh, sorry and you told about yourself that, okay, because of some ego, I do not say it. And you know what, like that was such a beautiful statement which you made because everyone has this ego and we do not tend to accept it. We always feel, oh no, I'm humble and I, I'm the one who is always okay with it. But the way you said it yourself, that shows your humility and how humble you are. And you know, such a person who is ready for corrections goes a way, way, way long in any field, whichever you take. To be a good listener and to be ready to correct yourself is what each and every every person, not only kids, and I really loved those points. Your stories and the connection was really, really amazing because I know it takes a lot of time to hear a story and then to connect it. And again, specifically with your C's to connect it, it must be have been a real uh, task for you. But you being a good preacher and a wonderful devotee, I think like you are really, really blessed by the Lord. So, and we really would like to see you on the calls. And you could be an inspiration for so many of the kids who are getting prepared. So thank, thank you so you. much for coming. And I really, really loved your class. I'm going to again listen to it. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Such a, such a beautiful, beautiful presentation. Uh, the confidence in you, the moments of eye, your eyes when you're talking, the way, the style in your talk, it's so confident. The content is so nice, so nice. I really love. And the way, it, you know, you are really a preacher. You should try to give regularly classes like this. You you are going to be a big preacher in, in your life. And it's so, so beautiful. And the way the statement you have did for uh, uh, the when you are sharing about the four mentality of the people you were sharing about uh, the Sunday feast program the people come and eat over there but they don't donate the way you are telling was so nice hope people see and try to donate right you know they come and eat on Sunday feast if they go to the restaurant they would have spent money for that right but still they don't donate for us but the way you told right maybe many people will move up and then they will try to donate such a nice nice presentation each and every point where you are comparing the crow and all those swan such a nice really i want to hear it 10 times to understand each and every concept that you have told because it's way of uh, my understanding my understanding level is very less even though i'm bigger than you i'm an elder adult but my understanding is so low your class is so beautiful i really loved you loud your class may krishna always bless
bless you and you inspire many people like me hari bol thank you hari bol hari krishna rasika i really liked your class but i have one question so why did arjuna uh, uh, give a diamond to the brahmana after he lost uh, after the robber took the coins from him or or when the brahmana uh, let the robber take the coins from him well um arjuna actually he was pretty rich so that's why he gave the diamond um but also part of the reason was arjuna had like he was like very like pitiful i mean he had he was like re- really rich and um he understood that br- the brahman was probably holding it and the robber is probably like really powerful so that's why he gave the brahman a second chance but then the third time krishna took over um so does that answer your question ranj yes thank you rasika Thank you for the wonderful presentation Rasika it was very well put together very well thought very well you know uh, narrated and you know the way you gave the presentation with so much confidence and with so much the flow in your talk it was very very good very inspiring to all the kids thank you so much very good Rasika can you share your presentation ppt with us in the group um yeah mathe uh, uh, to ask if you don't have a, if you i mean like if you are not in the groups or anything you can please send it to ajna mathe i'll send it okay mathe share share the link yeah no i have already rasika i will share in the group okay okay mathe Hare Krishna very interesting and very nice presentation thank you so much thank you Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Rasika I really like your presentation good job thank you Radhi Are there any more questions or comments Hare Krishna, Rasika. I like your uh, presentation, and there was like uh, from the seatings, the sixth one. You told me uh, that you told that that was like the nice one. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Rasika. I really like your presentation. Thank you. thank you so much rasika for coming and giving your presentation we uh, maybe you can give later on also i'll ask with you after our regular kids will finish your presentation are so nice and it is very helpful to other older kids also and for us also uh, thank you so much rasika we have a next um, part uh, our kids the mother kids and govinda madhav kids will Hear their rhyme, sloka, what they learned last week. Uh, if you Mother want, Chicken, to... Hare Krishna, uh, Rasika. Uh, hey. Rasika, it was a nice story, and uh, you told that uh, like you are uh, listening stories from Swami. Can you please uh, spell for us? Yeah, Mataji, I'll just send the YouTube link. Okay, thank you. Should be Anna Mataji. Uh, Rasika, uh, yeah, we have a next presentation. Of, uh, okay. uh, the other kids, Madhava and Govinda kids will do. If you want to if you stay, you can stay. It's up to you. Yeah. Mataji, shall we do break the room now? Yes, Mataji, can the other kids raise their hands, please? Parents, can you use the raise hand and then we can put yeah. you in the different room? Yes, Damodar kids who is joining regular Damodar uh, class, please raise your hand. 
we can go and practice your sloka and rhymes. I think Rishikesh is there. Uh, Balram, Subhadra, uh, Radhika, Rashika, Manmahi. Uh, who can? Uh, Zanvi is there, Mataji. Um, Sreya Srihari is there. Yes. Vaisala, Mataji. Sreya is there. Yes, Mataji, that uh, they are the only today here. Brinda is anyway. Brinda is there. You can just manage and come back, Mataji. Yeah, Mataji, Mataji. seven kids only, right? So far only. I yeah. saw Balram and Shivadra and Janavi, Rishikesh, Manmai Krishna. Uh, Radhika, uh, Rasika. Um, Radhika and Rasika. Yeah. Rasika, yeah. Yeah, Radhika and Rasika, yes. And then Shama Gauri and Vishali Patel. Did you see Gauri? Mataji, do you see Gauri? She's also raising her hand. Gauri, okay. Yes, Gauri, I put Mataji. Yeah, please, uh, kids. Uh, um, yeah, if anybody is there, I will send Mataji. Now I am going to open the room. Open the room. So, Mataji, uh, uh, Subhadra's mom, you can come back, Mataji, once you are done, okay? There is Govinda group in the main room today, this time. You will not have a problem this time, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Okay. So now, so, uh, Govinda group is here in the main room. So I would I would like to request all the kids to present what they learned. Uh, and small, uh, one more request, can kids come on their video when they are presenting? It will be so lively when we see you and other kids can be inspired by seeing you. It's a small request. Can you all come on the video when you are presenting? What did you learn from the Govinda class? Who wants to go first? Um, Hare Krishna Mataji, Ashutosh, can I say? Yes, Ashutosh, please on your video. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um. Uh. Yam yam vapi sparam bavram yaja ante kalevaram um tam tamai vaidi gonteya sadatad bhava bhavita. The second verse, I have like one more line to do to memorize it. Um. Uh, uh, and this week I learned from um. Bharata Maharaj, that we should not get attached to anything too much, and we should always um keep our minds on Krishna. Thank you, Ashitosh. Thank you so much. Um, who wants to go next? Oh, I can. Hare Krishna, who wants to go next? Um, me, um, who? Oh, no, okay. I'm spotting you. Yes, go ahead. Okay, Yami Abhapi Sadan Bhavan. Never mind that. Um, Tejate? What? Tejate Ante Kalevaram, right? What? Yeah, Tejate Ante Kalevaram. Tam Tam Yamati Kanteya. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, who wants to go next? We also had um, another Bhagavad Gita class. If you all joined that, we did one craft. We learned Vasan Shiji Nani. If anybody wants to recite that verse, please go ahead and recite even for me that one. Hare Krishna, kids. Is there anybody you'd like to perform? I mean, like present Edwards. Kartik. Yes, Kartik, can you come on video? Yes, Kartik, thank you, Kartik. Namaste, Purusham Twajam, Ishwaram Prakate Param. Alaksham Sarabhutanam, Antar Bahiya Vastitam, Maya Jamuni Kachanam, Adya Goksha Savyayam, Nalaksham Rudyadusha, Nato Nadrayata, Tata Paramahamsanam, Nuni Nama Malarkanam, Bhakti Yoga Vinanadam, Natam Pasya Mahishriya, Krishnaya Vasudevaya, Devaki Nanda Naisha, Nanda Gopakumaraya, Govindaya Namo Namaha, 
नम पंकज नाभा नम पंकज मालिन नम पंकज नेत्रा नमस्ते पंकज रंगे यम यम वापि स्मर भाव तर्जयती कलवरम हम तम कौतय सदा भाव भावित थैंक यू माता जी Thank you, Karthik. That was so nice. Now, Balram wants to go. I guess. Balram, go ahead. Yam yam vapis ma ramba vam. Jalam ante kali varam. Yam tamay vadi ko ante ya. Saratad bawa bawita. Krishna, Krishna swadamu pagate. Bar barna na na divi cha.
मुनि मामलात्मना भक्ति योग विधारणा कथम पश्येम हे स्त्रिय कृष्ण कृष्णाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपा कुमाराय गोविंदय नमो नम यथाशकल देवकी कंसे नुलाचरा सृजटिता विमोचिता चाजा विभो दिन मुहुर्पना नमो किंचन Hare Krishna Mata ji this is Anshu can i sing a um, bhajan Sure Anshu go ahead She's on video Vrindavana namyastana divya chinta mani dhama rata na mandira mano ha वृंदवान दिव्या चिंता धाम रतन मंदिर मनो हृत कालिंदी रे राजा हम सकेली करे ताहे शोभे kanaka kamana tara mate hema pita ashtadale beshtita ashtadale pradhana naika thank you mata ji beautiful beautiful so nice thank you Anshu, thank you so much. Uh, is there anybody who would like to say anything? The words that they learned or Vrindavana Ramyasthana from the. I want to say Vrindavana. No, you don't know the song. Vrindavana. You don't know. Once you learn fully, you can present it, Vrinda. I want to say something else. Thank you, Vrinda. Please. I want. Is there anybody before I end the call? okay i guess everybody has presented thank you so much kids i'll just close the room so that if there is anybody remaining over there they can come back to the Daddy main rashika to the main room i guess everybody is done over there also okay thank you kids i would like to offer my obeisances to all of you thank you so much for joining in vancha kalpa tarobhyasya kripa sindhu bhye vacha patidanam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo nama ananta koti vaishnav rind ki jai shila prabhupad ki jai rasika ki jai damodar govinda madhava jan damodar govinda madhava kids ki jai hari bol bhajanavi